let's use this language of complex matrices to talk about uh, complex vector spaces. So a natural question to ask now is what are the four fundamental subspaces of a complex matrix? Well, um, in the study of complex matrices, the column space is still defined as all linear combinations of the columns of that matrix. And the null space is still defined as all solutions to the equation AX equals zero. The one thing we change when we work with complex matrices is we no longer call the row space the row space. We uh, instead study the column space of the conjugate transpose. And we don't call the left null space uh, the left null space anymore. We, we instead study the null space of the conjugate transpose. But aside from those two uh, changes, everything else is the same. The dimension of the column space is still the rank. And that dimension is always the same as the dimension of the column space of the conjugate transpose. The dimension of the null space is still the nullity of that matrix. And the dimension of the null space of the conjugate transpose is still the nullity of the conjugate transpose of that matrix. So the dimension of the null space of the conjugate transpose uh, plus the dimension of the column space still equals M. And the dimension of the null space plus the dimension of the column space of the conjugate transpose is still equal to N. Also, our orthogonal uh, orthogonality relations hold. The column space of the, or, uh, of the conjugate transpose is the orthogonal complement of the null space, and the column space of the matrix is still the orthogonal complement of the null space of the conjugate transpose. So um, what does it mean to do uh, uh, linear algebra with complex vector spaces? Well, one thing we can do now is we can conjugate a vector space. Technically, what that means is that if we start with a vector space V, we can take its conjugate notationally by just writing a bar on top. And what this signifies is that we conjugate every single vector inside of the original vector space. So um, for example, let's say that our vector space is spanned by these two vectors. The first basis vector here is negative 2i minus 6, negative i plus 4, negative 2i plus 2. And the second basis vector is negative 2i minus 3, negative 2i plus 1, 0. Well, how would we work with the conjugate of this vector space? Well, according to the definition, all we do is we conjugate every vector in our list. So the conjugate of this vector space is the span of the conjugates of these two vectors. So our, our basis vectors now for the conjugate are 2i minus 6, i plus 4, and negative 2i plus 2. And then the second basis vector is 2i minus 3, 2i plus 1, 0. So to take the conjugate of a vector space, we just conjugate every single vector in the space. So the big question is, why are we bothering with all of this uh, language of complex numbers? Well, a really important thing to note here is that some matrices have complex eigenvalues and therefore have complex eigenspaces. So here's an example to illustrate this point. Here, we're studying the two by two matrix with zeros on the diagonal, one in the bottom left-hand corner, and negative one in the top right corner. If we bother to find the eigenvalues, we will find that there are exactly two of them, negative i and i. So the eigenvalues of this real matrix are complex numbers. How would we find bases for the eigenspaces? Well, since there are two eigenvalues, there must be two eigenspaces. The first eigenspace would be script E sub A of negative I. And remember, this is defined as the null space of the matrix, but we subtract off the eigenvalue times the identity. So here, since the eigenvalue is negative I, we're taking our matrix and we're adding I to the diagonal. So here we get I's on the diagonal. 
And this must be a rank one matrix because by definition, this difference matrix must be a singular matrix. So all we need to do is pay attention to just one of these two rows since this is a rank one matrix and we're studying the null space. So let's just look at the row one I and then if we row reduced, we would get zeros at the bottom here. So, um, well, what is the null space of this matrix? Since this is a two by two matrix with rank one, the nullity is one. So we only need to find one vector in this null space and one vector happens to be negative I comma one here. So the eigenspace of this two by two matrix corresponding to the eigenvalue negative I is spanned by the vector negative I comma one. For the second eigenspace, we're looking at script E sub A of I because I is the second eigenvalue. So now we're taking our matrix and subtracting off I multiplied by the identity. So now we take uh, the diagonal and subtract I from it. And again, this must be a rank one matrix because by definition of an eigenvalue, this difference matrix must be singular. And since this is two, a two by two singular matrix and the entries aren't all equal to zero, the rank here must equal one. So if we row reduced, we would just preserve one of these rows and then zero out the second row. So here, when we row reduce, we end up with one negative I for the first row and zeros in the second row. What is this null space spanned by? Well, again, the nullity must be one because this is two by two with rank one. So we just need to find one vector to multiply this matrix by to get zero. And the vector I comma one works here. So our second eigenspace is spanned by the vector i comma one, whereas the first eigenspace was spanned by negative i comma one. Um, one thing to note about this example is that the eigenvalues in this example are related by conjugation. So the conjugate of negative i is i, and same goes for the eigenspaces. The conjugate of the basis vector negative i one is i one. So we can write this down mathematically. E, script E sub A of negative I, we found that to be negative I comma one as, uh, or spanned by the single basis vector negative I comma one. Well, negative I comma one is the conjugate of the vector I comma one. So really what we're doing is we're conjugating the span of the vector I comma one, but that's exactly our eigenspace uh, for lambda equals I. So the two eigenspaces here are related by conjugation, and that turns out to be because these two eigenvalues are, look, are, are related by conjugation. So um, this turns out to um, um, be a theorem. If lambda is an eigenvalue of a real matrix, then its conjugate is also an eigenvalue, and the eigenspaces of those eigenvalues are related by conjugation. So this is why we have to understand the world of complex numbers, because even if we're working with real matrices, the eigenvalues might be complex numbers that aren't real, and therefore the eigenspaces are complex vector spaces. The upshot to this is that we don't have to change much of our theory to understand uh, uh, these new concepts. The main thing we have to pay attention to is when we're working with complex vectors, we are not taking dot products anymore, we're taking inner products. And when we're working with complex matrices, we're not transposing them anymore, we're conjugate transposing them. So what we'll see uh, uh, moving forward um, are techniques for finding eigenvalues, where now we can use um, uh, the language of complex uh, 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 polynomials to do so. And then we'll move on to uh, do uh, uh, some applications.